This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey, cat lovers. Welcome to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. I'm your host, Dr. Katherine Prim, and I'm a small animal veterinarian and cat lover. So we all love our cats. If you're listening to this show, you probably love cats. And I have invited my friend, Dr. Caitlin DeWild, to talk with us about some interesting ways that we can help our cats be healthier and show them some love. So today we're going to talk about a variety of ways that you may not have thought of and some products that you may not know about to help cats be happy and healthy. Right after these messages, we'll be right back. Dr. Cat here again. So I wanted to tell you something about my cat, Scamper. He's kind of become famous. People ask me about Scamper, but Scamper does this sort of annoying thing where when I act like I'm really interested in petting Scamper, that's when he decides to leave. And that's sort of a a cat thing, I guess. But yeah, walking up to Scamper, Scamper's got to think of it on his own. It's got to be his idea to play with me. But that's all stuff I can live with because what I can't deal with is a smelly litter box, which is really, really unacceptable. So I use Arm & Hammer Clump & Seal. It clumps really tight around the odor and it destroys it for seven days. A seven-day odor-free home, guaranteed. Because an odor-free home is a happy home. Arm & Hammer, more power to you. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. Dr. Caitlin DeWild is with me. Hey, Dr. DeWild, how are you? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Hey, it's a pleasure. So I hope that we're going to change some cats' lives for the better in a lot of different ways today. Because uh, on a previous episode, we've talked about feeding health and interesting and cool ways to make feeding a source of health for cats. But cats do other things besides eat. So I want to talk about some of those things. First, I guess you need to tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I'm a small animal veterinarian in the St. Louis area, and I'm one of those big cat nerds. So uh, I like dogs too, but cats are have a special place in my heart. So I am owned by two cats who are now 15, uh, Oscar and Hurricane. So have you had them since they were babies? Uh, one of them, yes. Oscar, I, I adopted. He was abandoned at our clinic and he was maybe six weeks old. Hurricane, we adopted as a playmate for him when she was close to a year, but we rescued her from the local animal shelter. So short answer, yes, basically their whole lives. And they get along well? They do. They're very different cats, which is they're not the two that will like cuddle up in a basket. Someday I always joke that my next round of cats, I'm literally going to take a basket into the shelter and the first two cats that get in it and like are all cuddly together. Those are the two (laughs) that are going home because they, my two do not cuddle, but they play together and they, they, now that they're older, there's less like, you know, tearing around the house playing together, (laughs) but they always are in the same room, but never you know, like right next to each other, but they don't fight or anything. They're just sort of like, all right, well, they're just good roommates, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Well, my cat, my cat Scamper, I haven't talked about Scamper's story very much, but one day at my animal hospital, one of my favorite clients came in with a laundry basket full of kittens. And she said that a feral cat had had these kittens on her front porch. Okay. And then she didn't know what to do with the kittens. So she wanted us to find someone to foster them. And I was like, oh, oh, look. And I reached my hand into this basket full of kittens and picked out the one that is now Scamper. And everyone on my my team was like, that one's been hissing at everybody. and But he loves you. Look at that. And so I was going to foster him for the weekend. And that has been, I don't know, four years ago. So I still have him. I'm still fostering him. Yep. Yep. So we talked a little bit on the last episode about feeding, and I still think that that's super duper important. But cats also drink water, and I think that it's underestimated how important water is to cats. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's absolutely true, and especially a concern for 
older cats and from the perspective of preventing various diseases, I kind of joke around, it's somewhat serious, but you know, I think most cats kind of live at a low level of dehydration, like all the time. <laughs> and if there's one thing that goes wrong, right, and they're not drinking appropriately, that's kind of the first thing that happens. And I don't know if you've been dehydrated, but you just feel like crap, right? And it just, it affects all the body's processes. So I think given that, you know, cats historically don't drink well, anything that we can do to encourage them to drink more or drink better can ultimately impact a lot of aspects of their health. I agree. And I think that cats do not drink enough. And of course, cats end up with kidney disease and some other issues. So I think that we do need to focus on that. And and I have actually written some articles about cat's quirky behavior when it comes to drinking, like, why does my cat want to drink out of the water faucet and that kind of stuff. But, but I think that that kind of brings us to some positive habits or products that we could find to help cats with drinking. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think basically everybody that has ever owned a cat has probably at some point found them drinking out of their own glasses of water or drinking out of the toilet. Or if you're like one of my cats, she like almost demands that I turn on the tub for her like a couple times a week so that she can drink out of that. Like there's something about getting them to have running water for a lot of cats that that's exciting for them and that's what their preference is. So anything that we can do to help that, especially if you have an older cat, like you mentioned, that might be at risk or actually having some degree of kidney insufficiency, or if you have a male cat since they are more prone to urinary obstruction, especially if they're dehydrated, I think you really have to do whatever you can to encourage hydration, however that comes, if you're just turning something on or you're investing in some of the products that we might talk about here. And of course, novelty is the cat's best friend. Anything that's different or interesting will attract a cat's attention. So I invested in a pet fountain for Scamper so that he has running water and the interesting sounds and things. And I've been really happy with that. But there are different options, aren't there? Yeah, there's several options out there. And again, I'm glad that my my cat's being guinea pigs for me has now paid off. So I feel better about investing <laughs> in several of these so I can make some good recommendations. But yeah, there's there's definitely different kinds of fountains. I truthfully think every cat owner have one. And for, like we've talked about, a variety of reasons, I actually got my first cat fountain because I was traveling when I was in vet school and I had had my cats when they were much younger. If I was gone for like a huge portion of the day or even maybe an overnight, if I had a, an emergency clinic shift, I always wanted to make sure that they had water available, right? So the fountains, number one, are nice that they're different and they're exciting to the cat. But number two, you can have a larger capacity without it getting kind of nasty, right? <laughs> if, it's, if it's moving, it's not going to just be this giant bowl of stagnant water. So I, I always felt better that that was available to them when I was not at home as much. Yeah, I agree with that completely. There are theories that cats do not like to drink standing water because they instinctively know that stagnant water can can cause some health issues. But and so then they just don't drink at all, which right. causes health issues. So right. Um, right. the brands and things, the one that I have, and you may know of other ones, but PetSafe makes several pet fountains in a variety of price points and cleanability. Have you found any specific one that you like? Yeah. So the, the one I like the most right now, and, and I've had several, and I think knowing your cat's preferences helps, but the, the one that I like is the, the Drinkwell Pet Fountain, and they come in a couple different kinds. The one I specifically like right now is a little bit, a little bit more pricey. It's like 75 bucks or so, but which is a little bit more and definitely not the entry level. The reason I like it is because my cat specifically likes to drink the water as it's coming out. So some of them, the water will come out and then like slide down like a little ramp kind of thing. Mine like it if they can actually drink like the stream itself. And I have one cat that is really prone hurricane. She's white and, or mostly white and her, she's really prone to chin acne. And a lot of the fountains that the one downside is most of them are plastic, right? And those can retain a little bit more bacteria. And I find that with the plastic fountains and plastic food bowls, she'll get more chin acne. So the, the Avalon version of the drink well is ceramic. 
So we've had a little bit better luck with that one with her. But I've also tried some of the other ones that start at like 30 bucks, right? And in fact, we have one of those as well. She just, it's upstairs. <laughs> she drinks out of this one. She seems to like it better. I don't know. <laughs> Well, and the the pet safe ones are dishwasher safe, and we all know that convenience kind of kind of trumps things oh, yes. sometimes when we're busy. So. <laughs> it definitely, if it's not going in the dishwasher, like let's be real, I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm not going to wash it. <laughs> no, I will. I I will. Well, I will I'll wait. It, I'll it wait too shorten, long, probably. Yeah, it's going to shorten the lifespan. I'm willing to accept that risk. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I agree with you on the plastic thing, but at least the drink well fountain is BPA free plastic. And there have been some studies that indicated that the BPA is contributing to the number of hyperthyroid cats that we're seeing. Right. So I kind of like that that is BPA free, although I'm with you. I would prefer ceramic or stainless steel or something when it comes to pets because of the greasy feeling that the plastic has. So I completely support that. Yeah, like we actually have them on all. My cats now will basically not drink water out of a bowl <laughs> at this point because they've had access to fountains their whole life. And kind of in a funny way, now my dog won't drink out of a bowl either. So <laughs> we so have they've trained you really well yeah. is what I'm, oh, I'm yeah. getting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the boy, Oscar, he actually, like even when I put our... We have one downstairs that that is plastic. And the reason that we have that one there is because it's the biggest capacity one that we could get because that's the downside. If you have a dog that's also going to drink out of them, the small, cute cat ones, my dog can drain it in like, uh, oh yeah, you know, one episode. So to me, it was worth getting the bigger capacity one so I didn't have to refill it all the time. I mean, granted, I fill it up every day as it is, but... I just don't have to do that multiple times because if the dog drinks all the water, then the, there's a pump in these things, right? And it's plugged in. So it makes like this terrible sound if, oh, yeah. if, if it runs out of water. So we yeah. had the big capacity one downstairs because the dog insisted on drinking out. So all three of them will drink out of the same one, which is nice. But that is kind of my recommendation to have the bigger capacity if you have a dog that's going to use them. But the other um, the kind of funny thing about my cat, Oscar, even when I take that one apart and put it in the dishwasher to wash it, he won't walk upstairs and use the other one. He will literally sit at the dishwasher until it comes out. And then he's like, oh, it's back. Like he's so happy about it. So for some cats, it's really, really a thing for them. So I mean, the novelty thing, right? Yeah. I, I mean, they all, we all like for things to be new and different, I guess. I mean, whatever, you know, yeah. excites you. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, whatever makes them happy. Obviously I'm willing to do. Right. Well, me too. I'm pretty well trained as well. So the, the drink well one, the plastic one does have a bigger capacity. So yeah, I mean, you know, you just have to find your, your place. Did you see, I know it's not particularly healthy or whatever, but did you see the fountain that looks like a toilet? Did you see no. that? Oh my gosh. It's a cat waterer that looks like a little <laughs> toilet and the cat <laughs> can drink out of it. I don't know the brand name on it. I didn't do any research on it, but I thought, you know, I know some people that would totally dig that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, so um, let's take a quick break and then come back and talk about some other things that we could do to make the environment extra cat friendly in our homes. We'll be right back. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. When we put him on the Dynavite, he took right to it. All of these symptoms disappeared. Dynavite is nutrition. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. Something that he actually likes to eat. You need to put him on Dynavite. Dynavite for life. If you love your dog, you don't just want him healthy, you want him to be happy. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot oh. com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat on Pet Life Radio. And Dr. Caitlin DeWild is with me today. And we're having fun talking about ways to make our homes better for our cats and products that can help us show our cats love. So we've been talking about drinking fountains, which she and I both really, really like, but there are a few other things, just quick little things that I think that you can do. And I'm sure that she thinks you can do in your environment to make it a little bit better for cats. So what do you think next? Well, we've talked about feeders. We've talked about waters and we've talked about having just 
kind of in general toys that can be rotated and give them, you know, something to do. But I think one thing that we could talk about is, is catios. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with those. I actually am. In fact, I found a, a person that shared making a catio, which a catio is just an enclosure on the back of your house, like a patio that is specifically designed with your cat in mind. And someone took a chicken coop and converted it into a catio. And I shared it on my Facebook page and everybody's like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. So yeah, I love the idea of catios plus being able to buy something that's sort of ready-made and just modify it. So I don't actually have to build something. Right. I'm not very crafty. Yeah, me neither for sure. But, and it's, it's fun to say, number one, <laughs> but it's, it's, they're so nice for cats to have that outdoor exposure. I think every cat I know loves to be outside or would love to be outside, but truthfully, it's scary to me, right? I, I'm terrified that something's going to happen to them. They're going to run away. They're going to get in an altercation with some sort of other creature that may or may not have disease. They're going to have access to just the environment that would bring them in exposure with uh, parasites. So fleas and, and ticks and intestinal parasites, and then bring that back to into my house with my kids, like, no, thank you. So, and I live on a busy street, right? So I'm always worried about their, their safety. So this is a nice way that we can give them that environmental enrichment in a safe way so they can experience outside and, and get the fresh air and hear the birds and, and watch what's going around, um, but do so safely. Yeah. And it's kind of cool because if you have a big enough one, you can have a chair and you can sit out there and, you know, drink your iced tea and play with your cats and listen to the birds. So yeah, I'm all about that. I think catios are, are super cool. Also, I think it's neat that cats can climb up to look at bugs and birds and stuff. I love the idea of vertical spaces. Do you have vertical spaces in your house? I bet you do. Oh, I totally do. And my husband has prevented me from just like building them into every room of our home. Uh, <laughs> but my cats love them. And I have what my husband refers to as the Taj Mahal of cat trees for that very reason, so that they can climb and they can get up. One of my cats prefers to be up on something at all times. And it's just her her way. She's always been like that, but I think especially now that we have young kids, I think she really likes it because she can see what's going on, but she doesn't have to worry about, you know, getting run over by a transformer or, you know, <laughs> have a step on a leg out, you know, those kind of things. So um, <laughs> I think she, she likes kind of observing from her perch. <laughs> so I think every cat owner household should find out and should experiment with some of those things, at least give them a safe place that they can get to that is elevated so that they can use their natural instincts, perch up there, see how it goes. My other cat doesn't particularly care to, to do that, but I think he's in the minority. <laughs> yeah. We had a, a little like elevated kind of table thing built for when we, when we bought this house, we had it built mm -hmm. for the cat so that he can get up away from the dog and have kind of his own own spot, but you don't have to spend a lot of money because yep. there are all kinds of little cat hammocks. And I have in my office, I have one with suction cups. That's like a cat hammock that suctions yep. to the window. Yep. And I love that. And it was like 20 bucks. So yeah. yeah, I love vertical spaces. Yeah. And now they have so many too, that I'll admit, like, you know, when I lived in an apartment and my cats were younger, I didn't really care that I had this giant cat tree in my living room, right? Like that's, that's uh, but now that I'm older and I would like my house to, you know, look a little nicer, sometimes it's hard to find those things that you're not like, oh, okay, that's not so much stylish. And <laughs> so, but they have a lot of really cool things now out there. And honestly, sometimes just having a shelf, right? Like a empty shelf, like is enough for, for cats. So they don't really care what it looks like, but if you do, they have lots of more modern design ones available, but you don't even have to make it a huge investment to have a space that looks good and is good for your cat. Well, I got to do an interview with Kate Benjamin. She is a feline friendly designer. So she designs stuff that is aesthetically pleasing to owners, but very, very usable for cats. And her website is House Panther, H A U S panther.com. And I love that she does that. I mean, she makes litter boxes pretty and she calls it the cat super highway, um, <laughs> which is all vertical spaces around the top of your room. So there are definitely ways to make it work for everybody. 
So yep. I would encourage all of my listeners to to look into that. It, it can be 20 bucks or it can be, you know, up from there, but it can be done and cats need it. Absolutely. So I think that we've talked about some really, really important and valuable things today. And I hope that we have given my listeners enough resources to kind of look into that, even if we just piqued your interest to say, you know, maybe I could do a little more for my cat to make him or her a little happier, then that's what this show is all about. So Dr. DeWild, I thank you so much for coming because it's always so fun to see you and talk to you. And so thank you. Thanks for having me. And always, I want to thank my amazing producer, Mark Winter, because without him, Nine Lives with Dr. Cat would not exist. So also, all of my listeners, go out, make your home a more cat-friendly place, and also have a perfect day. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.